Okay, here's another successful installation. It's a 4.0 Elite. Finally finished testing. Got him mowing. So he's going to be doing this, his own thing. Well, I'm going to explain what I did here. Let's get started. Okay, so the customer has gates, fence, and there's gates on both sides. This is your typical suburban lawn that has a driveway, sidewalk, so that's what we're going to go over. So to get through the gate here, I mean, first of all, the two wires, you can kind of see them there. We need two feet four inches wire to wire for it to mow dependably. And by luck and chance, we actually had exactly that. Then. There's a case of getting it through the gate. Now the homeowner is going to put the wires under the bricks, but you can see that there's 12 inches exactly between the two wires because if you put more than 12 inches, or sorry, less than 12 inches between the wires, the signal begins to cancel. So you would see the robot do very strange things if that happened. The other tricky thing about this was the measurements. I'm gonna open the gate to explain. So you see how the, when the gate is open. Okay, so now when we measure, it would be a mistake in this case to measure from the post that goes into the ground because the farthest point that sticks out is actually this corner right here. So it, the next wire closest to this corner must be 14 inches. So from this corner to here is exactly 14 inches. Now, that may not be important in every case, but it was important in this case. And the reason is, see those bricks over there? So, so that the robot does not interfere with those bricks, we also need 14 inches between these raised bricks. And turned out that from here to there, oops, let me point better, from there, to there turned out to be actually something like 13 inches. Um, so it was a little short, but because the length of time that it would be uh, violating the specification is so small, I, I had a feeling that it would work. And then when we actually laid it out, it turned out we were able to, we actually met the spec in all the cases. So when I initially measured, I had measured wrong. So there we go. The arc, 12 inches, 12 inches meeting up here. Now this is your narrow strip that goes to the front. Now here, two inches away from the edge, we ran into kind of some uh, pavement under there. So at times we were two inches, at other times we had to come out a little. Then because that was some buried wires, the machine wasn't used there. And uh, we normally would bury it by hand, but he said he's getting rid of this basketball hoop, getting a new one. So he said, don't bother. So anyway, hand, hand packed 14 inches away from that pole, back to two inches, hand packed over the, where the uh, marked wires are. Now, I went over with the homeowner, the risks of Cross, letting the robot cross the sidewalk on its own. And his decision was to carry the robot across the sidewalk and not let it go on its own. And he also decided, because there are so many people out in the front, walking the dogs, whatever, riding, kids riding bikes, as you can see it's a nice neighborhood, that he made a wise decision that he's going to be out here in the front when the robot is mowing. Some, some people don't want to do that. And then what I advocate is mowing only at night or purchase the Elite model or any model with a touch screen because you have the control of being able to tell the robot where to mow when. So here it is, the two wires directly together across the sidewalk. He's gonna caulk this. So you can see no one can trip right now, so we're in good, good shape there. Uh, you know, normally our dealers would uh, do all those services. Um, you know, we're just doing this 
because there was no dealer in the area and also I like the opportunity to do marketing videos like this um, 14 inches away from the fire hydrant and then back up to the street now this curve is a really nice one it's a very gentle sloped curve so since he's going to be out here you know normally we want to be three feet away from any street um, but since he's planning on being here while it's mowing if it gets on the wire after it's done mowing you know one what one tire is on the on the curb okay but if anything bad happens he's here to rescue the robot of course we tested it and nothing bad happened which was great now really don't like crossing the driveway so this is why we, we wire it so that the wire does not cross the driveway it's kind of a u shape gentleman's there with his leaf blower so hopefully that doesn't disrupt the audio so that's why i'm talking kind of loud but i'm going to go over here because i want to show uh the wire over here because i wired this tree which is very common in these parkways i wired this tree as a tight spot so you can see the cuts right there and then this shape i mean i'm kind of small so it's really hard for me to maneuver the machine i don't know if you can see i'll point with my finger but it just kind of went like that which is really not ideal not to spec and then kind of like that's a little better like a u but the important thing is to have 12 inches between these wires because then the robot will not drive over the wires and why did i choose that okay once again i took the measurement we have 14 inches to there and then to the street it's really only like a foot and a half that's totally out of spec um if you want it to work near an, an obstacle near the street never have a problem in all conditions you know generally four to five feet but these robots are pretty good if you need to get put it uh closer the absolute don't violate spec is two feet four inches and there may be an occasional you know like when the ground looks like this and there's mud there may be an occasional time when it, it slips out of the border but uh i tested it in these conditions actually and it, it all worked great so i may be way too conservative it's very possible they've improved the robots a lot over the years okay luckily that thing stopped so so this is the front yard and same thing on this side where the two wires go across the sidewalk and you can see no one's going to trip even though it's not cocked yet because it was a really good deep crack and then brought together here at 90 degrees because uh, the robot's not seeing that wire he's just gonna when he's mowing the front he's just gonna drive right past that because it's invisible to him okay and then going back and then as i said oh by the way while i'm here you know people get their yards marked for the installation these flags are absolutely deadly to a robot so you have to explain that to the customer this customer was planning on doing other work so he wanted the flags left uh but so we i explained to him look these are deadly you need to make sure they're not there um if the robot uh, picks up this this uh wire it could get wrapped around the blade it could get wrapped around the wheel motor it can definitely cause a failure of the robot so scare your customers into that because they need to understand that the yard needs to be safe for the robot okay 14 inches from here okay and then going back so this is another narrow area but 14 inches from here now went around this stuff okay but the robot that's flush so the robot's tire can go over that no problem and it was tested and it worked now this right here is a little bobble you see this little bobble here in the wire that was because of that low vent thinking that oh maybe that's too tall for the robot turn out went way under it i totally misjudged that i could have gone straight but anyway um that sometimes activates as a false rapid return in this case we can leave it like that though because it's kind of like a free one because if the robot detects the rapid return it will drive a few feet past that and see where my finger is and then it'll make a right uh it'll swing 90 degrees it'll drive across it'll pick up this wire and then that actually is on the way back to the base so that's perfect it, it actually is a false rapid return 
that doesn't hurt anything so I call it a free rapid return okay and again 14 inches from each um, from the gate same issue with the gate on this side as we had on the other side now let me explain something about when the gates are closed so this homeowner as I said is planning on using the robot to mow autom fully automatically in the back and he's planning on allowing it to mow in the front only when he's home so most of the time the gates are going to be closed also has a beautiful little poodle looks like he went inside um, so you know gates have to be closed for the dog so it's set up to mow in three areas this is area one in the back area two is uh, on the right side of the house when you're looking from the front and area three is on the left side of the house um, when you're looking from the front so the settings are all set properly for it to drive to the different areas when the gates are open so let's say the homeowner's home he's tootling around playing with his family kids are on the trampoline he's tootling around the front and the back I said okay so you're just gonna open the gates and let the robot do its thing he might go to the front he might go to area two he might go to area three he might mow right there whatever um, it the robot decides to do and your lawn's getting mowed so but when he's working or not outside those gates are going to be closed and when they're closed and the robot needs to go back to the base He's going to come to the wire, pick up the wire, drive towards the gate. I'll close it so you can I can more easily demonstrate. He's gonna drive towards the gate. Okay? And then the bump sensor is gonna activate right there. Right at that wire. So he's gonna back up. He's gonna arc. He's going to pick up this wire and then start going along until he gets back to the base and, and docks. Now, tricky thing about the base, this is uh, somewhat perpendicular, so the robot needs a certain amount of straight wire in front. So to give it that straight wire, it actually loops out into the yard. I'll just try to walk along it like this and so then this other wire the second wire the wire from the back it's actually going under and then to the back now you'll see the base does need to be on a level surface that surface was not yet prepared so we made a temporary solution of the um, cardboard here the homeowner is going to level it and make it nice and level so that's basically the overview another successful installation and there's our first